about Hurricane Irene. Let's go to Bill Keneally in our forecast center. Bill. All right, Marnie, thank you very much. As you have said, the hurricane officially is offshore, but it's close enough to shore to deliver a lot of rain and an awful lot of wind, as uh, Jeff Morrow will attest to. We'll be going to Jeff momentarily. Let's talk about the 11 o'clock advisory, though, on Hurricane Irene. Top winds now bumped up a little bit to 80 miles per hour. That's probably the biggest difference. The uh, center point, roughly at 28.2 north, 80 west, I say roughly, it's uh, rather ill-defined. It looks like it's trying to uh, reassemble itself out there about 40 miles east, southeast of Cape Canaveral, Florida. The movement out of the north at 8 miles per hour, that has slowed a little bit, and the pressure remaining pretty constant at 986 millibars. Hurricane watches were hoisted at 5 o'clock this morning from Cape Hatteras all the way to Edisto Beach. You folks in Charleston and anybody in the Grand Strand area, up towards Brunswick County, North Carolina, Wilmington, Moorhead City, be on the lookout, folks. Hurricane watch means conditions are possible within 24 to 36 hours. And once again, get out there and do what you have to do to uh, make sure you can protect life and property. And once again, the tropical storm warning continues from Edisto Beach southward all the way down to Jupiter Inlet, where we've had reports of winds very gusty today, especially in and around the Space Coast area. Let's get the analysis now from our expert desk and Dr. Steve Lyons. Steve, it's out over open water and it's over warm water, but it looks like the upper air pattern not necessarily favorable for a whole lot of further strengthening. What can you add? Well, that's right, Bill, but it is getting its act together a little bit, not enough to become a major hurricane or anything, but it looks a lot more organized than it did when it was over land. Let's look at the little larger scale pictures, then we'll zoom in, and you can see the circulation center fairly well defined right there in that little uh, hole, so to speak. It's starting to form what appears to be a very poorly defined eye circulation there. And as it goes northward, keep in mind here, as it goes along the coast, it's the onshore flow that's going to be the big impact to the coastline there. High surf and strong onshore flow is going to be the big impact, and most of the rain is added north of the system as well. Once the system goes by to the, uh, to the north of, of the coast, winds are offshore, the waves decrease rather quickly, and the rain decreases rather dramatically as well. So be especially paying attention to well ahead of the system, not just right as the system comes uh, towards you. And relative to that, you can see here's our latest projected path. We're expecting uh, by the time it gets uh, around tomorrow afternoon or so, tomorrow evening, it's going to be nearing the North Carolina coastline probably. And uh, the farther east it goes, the better off we are. Keep in mind right now, winds are not strong enough to do all that much damage. It's going to be a major rain producer. And you can see I left this image on here right now just to show you that we're starting to see that circulation well defined on the satellite imagery now. Let's get back to Bill. All right, Dr. Steve Lyons, thank you very much. We have two crews out in the field. Both are on the eastern side of Florida today, one being Mike Seidel down in South Florida, also Jeff Morrow in Daytona Beach. And Jeff, as uh, predicted, you are getting blasted pretty good there. What are the winds like? When's the next high tide? And what has Volusia County done to prepare for this? Well, I'll take those one at a time, Bill. Basically, uh, the winds here probably gusting well over 50 miles an hour at times. Uh, sustained, I would imagine, probably near 40 or 45, somewhere. Definitely tropical storm strength. Uh, as far as the next high tide comes in, in about an hour, maybe a little over an hour from now. Now, we've seen consistent waves crashing up against the seawall that I'm standing on. In fact, about, oh, three or four minutes ago, right before I came on here live, a wave crashed up and covered this whole cement area that I'm standing on uh, with water. So we're going to have to probably move back. There has been significant beach erosion on the beach here. In fact, there really isn't much of a beach to show you. Uh, the waves are coming right up against the seawall. So the famous, uh, world famous Daytona Beach that everybody loves to drive on, no way. You can't even walk on it out there. You're going to get very, very wet. Let's show you what it looked like a little bit earlier, kind of a contrast from what we're looking